Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the channel if you're new here. A little while back I made a full service video where I showed you how I service my car from start to finish. Thank you to everyone that's commented and left me feedback on that video, I really appreciate it and that's why I'm making this video, it's a follow up, just highlighting a few points from the comment section. I know a few people brought up the fact that I used the wrong oil, so thank you for that and bringing that to my attention. That's why I'm making this video where I'll be changing the oil for the right specification and talking a little bit about the right specification for these modern petrol and diesel engines just so you don't make the same mistake I did. So this is the oil I used in my previous video. This is the oil I should have been using. What's the difference I hear you ask? They're both fully synthetic 5W30 oils suitable for Volkswagen. They're both made by Castrol. So what is the difference? Well the difference is this is a low saps oil low in sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulphur. It's better suited for vehicles with a DPF, a diesel particulate filter, um, if you use the wrong oil over a long period of time, such as this one, which isn't suitable for vehicles with a DPF, then it could block up your DPF much quicker, potentially bugger up your emission system, and it could go into limp mode. But in the short term, it'd be absolutely fine, especially because I've got a newer car. I'm not recommending you use that oil at all. I'm recommending you use the right specification for your car and there's so many different specifications out there particularly for Volkswagens they have different specifications so this is up to Volkswagen spec 50400 forward slash 50700 I found this table online that shows all the different specifications of Volkswagen oil so we can clearly see the 507 has got really good properties. Geez, these modern engines are fussy, not like my old Nana engine. There we can see oil temperature 54 degrees C. By the time I've got the car jacked up and all the all the under tray off and that, it'll be down to about 40 degrees maybe. So that should be fine. I'm just going to jack the car up and put it on axle stand so we've got room underneath it to work on it. On this particular car, there's just enough room to get the jack in there. So the jack's pumped up all the way. And then I can put the axle stand in alongside it. So I'm just going to release the jack very, very carefully until it drops onto the axle stand. Okay, so the car's on the axle stand and it's nice and secure now. Let's whip the under tray off. They're all Torx bolts on this one. If you haven't got an impact gun, that's fine. You can just use the socket and wrench. Okay, and I think it's got lots of little ones around the edges. And then whip this cover off. So here I have my catch tray, well used as you can see. Slide that under there. There's a sump plug on the back of the oil pan. It's a 19 mil sump plug. So I'm just going to loosen that off. I'm just going to remove my sump plug. Let it drop into the pan. And move my fingers out of the way quick so I don't get covered in oil. Like that. Just leave that now to drain. By opening this filler cap, you're allowing the engine to vent and it will help the oil drain out. This is the oil filter housing up here. Plastic kind of casing. It's a 32 millimeter socket to remove the, the filter. It has got a little drain plug in it, so you could drain out the oil beforehand. That's this one here. But personally, I just take the whole lot off. Uh, it saves a lot of time. It's a little bit more messy, but this is a messy job anyway. So here we have the filter housing. I'm going to take the old o-ring off this and you can use, I've got this tool here, but you could use like an old screwdriver and just bend the end over, bend the tip of it over, get this in behind the o-ring and then I can just pull it off. 
the new filter will come with a new o-ring hopefully and also in this drain there's another little o-ring in here so you can take this drain plug out and change that one as well I recommend genuine Volkswagen parts but if you're on a budget then you can use something a little bit cheaper such as MAN or Bosch perhaps so with this job keeping everything as clean as possible is very important you don't want to get any contaminants in your engine so here's my new o-ring and the smaller one is for the drain plug so I'm just going to put that in the box for now I'm going to put my new o-ring on the filter housing just push that on there like so so it's a 13 millimeter socket to take the plug out and that just unscrews like so so on the drain plug you've got this little o-ring here so you get something behind this little o-ring pop it off and on goes a new one and just before I put that back in a little bit of engine oil it's got a little bit of oil on there anyway and then I can screw that down in there make sure the inside of your filter is nice and clean I've cleaned this one out and then we can go ahead and put in the new filter and that just clips in into the housing like so on the bottom of the filter housing it also has a torque specifications for this so the plug is 5 plus 2 newton meters and the actual filter housing itself is 25 plus 5 newton meters put a little bit of oil around the o-ring just to stop it binding up when I screw it back in That's 30 newton meters. I'm just going to torque up the little plug in there now. There it is. So this is my sump plug. As you can see, it's got a captive washer on there. It's recommended that you replace this every oil change, or at least replace the washer. But for this, because it's a captive washer, you'd have to replace the the whole plug for a new one but I'm just going to reuse this one because you know chances are if it does start leaking it's not going to leak dramatically out of this it's going to seep oil in time for me to notice right I'm just talking up the sump plug if you're not confident just nipping it up by feel you can use a torque wrench and I believe it's 30 newton meters <laughs> I'm just cleaning the old dipstick now it's time to fill it up with new oil. I've put the sump plug back in, all the filter housing screwed up nicely and torqued up. So now we can put our new oil in. And this time, I've got the right oil. So I buy this oil in four litre drums. Um, you can buy them in one litre bottles as well. You need 4.7 litres for this oil change. So you could buy a four litre bottle and a one litre bottle if you're only doing a one one off if you're planning on selling the car or something so I'm going to start off by pouring one four litre drum in obviously make sure you use a clean funnel this looks a bit dirty but it is actually very clean and before you go too far just get underneath and check you haven't got any oil leaks because the last thing you want to do is put all that oil in just for it to drain out the bottom so with one bottle of the good stuff in there it takes our dipstick up to there and don't forget when we start the engine it's still got to circulate around the oil filter so it'll drop back down I'm going to measure out the exact quantity you don't have to do it like this but I put four litres in so if I measure out 700 mil it should take it to exactly where it's got to be 700 mil and that should be bang on once I've let the engine circulate a little bit it should drop back down to the correct level okay so I'm just going to start the car up let the oil circulate um, and then I'm going to go underneath check make sure that I haven't got any oil leaks from around the oil filter housing or from the sump plug then I need to put the under tray back on and then take it off the jack stands and that's pretty much it am I right? Ok, 
Okay, on the trays back on. So that's 4.7 litres. As you can see, it's about three quarters of the way up the dipstick. Finally, I just need to show you how to reset your service light if that's come up. So you push this button, turn the ignition on, reset oil change service, click it again, and that's it, service reset. And then down here, if I go to car, set up, uh, service, I'm not gonna show you my VIN number. And then you've got the inspection there, and then the oil change service reset. So it's now a year, or 9,400 miles before I start getting a reminder. It's good to keep track of your car servicing, even if you are doing it at home. So I've just filled out my service book. Oil change service, yes. Long life engine oil used, yes. We used the good stuff. The service was carried out on this date, at this mileage, by myself. And then the date is due, so in a year's time, or in 10,000 miles. I do believe this long life engine oil lasts quite a considerable amount of time. For what it's worth, I like to change it out every year because it's really not too expensive or that much of a hassle if you're doing it yourself. So I think you get the picture, just make sure you use the right specification oil for your car and you'll be able to find this in your owner's handbook. It's always worthwhile doing a little bit of research. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and enjoyed watching it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care.